In the famous 1959 Alfred Hitchcock movie North by Northwest, Cary Grant's character goes to New York City's Grand Central Terminal to escape capture for a murder he didn't commit, a place he could blend in more easily with the crowds. And the crowds are still there. More than 750,000 people a day pass through this historic building, making it one of the busiest train stations in the world. Fortunately for commuters, this urban landmark, more than 100 years old, was saved from the wrecking ball in 1975 by a coalition led by former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. Now its conception, history, secrets, and effects upon our city is examined in a book by New York Times urban affairs correspondent Sam Roberts. The title, Grand Central, How a Terminal Transformed America. And Sam Roberts joins us now to talk about this iconic cathedral for the common man in midtown Manhattan. Sam, nice to have you here with us. Thank you, Jack. Pleasure. Let's talk about the beginning of this, all right? Because it, it's, it's when you learn the details about its history, it's so fascinating in the book and the photos you have. But essentially, there was a train station there before. But what was it? What was the event that essentially was the catalyst for the creation of Grand Central Terminal? Well, there was a depot there before, a train station there before. And one of the great fun things about writing this book, I've been covering New York for the Daily News, for the Times for almost 50 years. And I learned so much about the city by writing this. Grand Central started, in effect, by accident, by an accident, 1902, Two trains slammed together, uh, about 15 people killed immediately. And it was because they had to go through a dark, smoky tunnel under what became Park Avenue. Uh, and the owners of the station, the owners of the New York Central Railroad, realized that this just wasn't safe. Uh, they were going to be held liable at some point, and they realized they had to do something about it. And an engineer named William Wilgus came up with the idea of electrifying the railroad. And if they electrified it, there'd be no more smoke, no more cinders, no more sparks, and also they could deck over Park Avenue. So before, people don't realize there was this gaping trench yeah, in the middle of that. Manhattan. Again, because there are uh, some great photographs here, but we know Park Avenue with the, the, the strip in the center and the trees and the lights in the holiday season. But essentially, as you said, it was just a trench? It was a trench and, and a dirty trench and it was hard to get across. You think it's difficult to get across Midtown now. Getting across town then with the trench in the middle was really tough. And it's interesting because when I worked on this book, we came up with the subtitle, How a Train Station Transformed America. And uh, I left the publisher's office and I said, boy, that's a little audacious, mm -hmm. isn't it? But in doing the research for the book, I discovered how many things it had an impact on. Air rights, for one thing, the landmark law, as you said. Right. Um, it shifted the center of gravity of Manhattan from downtown to its very doorstep. And by the way, real quick, we often refer to it as Grand Central Station. Yes, it it's is. Not. It is not. What's uh, the difference? Why is that significant? Well, uh, as someone said, does my train stop at Grand Central Terminal? And the answer to that is it better because that's where <laughs> the tracks end. A terminal is the end of the line. Right. A station trains go through, like right. Penn Station. So, so it is, is technically the right term, a terminal. Terminology. The subway station is a station, right. but the uh, train station is a terminal. So when it's completed, and how long did it take? To, to the, the, the building Well, process. they started uh, about 1904, 1905, and it finished 1913. Right. So we just uh, fairly recently celebrated the 100th anniversary. And that's why if you look at that logo and look at some of those clocks that say 713 on them, on a 24-hour clock, that is 1913. You can trick your friends with that one. That's a great one. But you see a photo of this majestic building, and it's essentially sitting there by itself. How was it then that that was such open territory to build there, and how long did it take before it became encircled by what we know now in terms of high-rises and office buildings? Well, it really created that city. It created, it was supposed to be something called Terminal City, and there was very, very little there. When you look at those photos in the book, you're absolutely right. It was a wasteland. And that's only 100 uh, years ago. That's right. I mean, the, the main part of town, the center of the city was 14th Street, maybe 23rd. Third Street, and what this building of Grand Central did was really shift that cultural center of gravity from downtown to 42nd Street, and 42nd Street developed because of that. There are a couple of great facts, you know, marvelous, curious facts in here. A lot, not a couple, there are a lot of them. Let me ask you just about a few of them. 
One of them has to do with if you if if you walk through the terminal now, and there are always so many tourists wandering through. And one of the things they love to do is look up at the celestial scenery up top. But we talk about the fact that that's not entirely accurate. No, I mean it's a twenty-five thousand square foot celestial ceiling. Don't try to navigate by it, because it turns out the uh, ceiling is backwards. Uh, when they painted it, although originally the railroad said this is going to be great to educate school children, it turns out they were holding up a chart like this. So they painted it backwards instead of uh, the actual way it's supposed to be. And one commuter, about two or three days after the terminal opened, noticed it. And of course, it's become a fixture. Yeah. You, we, we mentioned how, and again, we talk about the title, how a train station transformed um, America. So you talked a little bit about New York. Certainly it shifted the center of gravity, if you will, in New York. How about the impact on America? Well, there were things that happened first there, and that's what I found so fascinating in researching the book, Standard Time began at Grand Central. Before that, in the 1880s, Noon was wherever the sun was in the middle of the sky. There were hundreds of different time zones all over the country. They decided to create standard time primarily for the railroads, not the government. The railroads did that, and it started first at Grand Central. The sleeping car porters union, A. Philip Randolph, began at Grand Central, which you could argue was in part the start of the civil rights movement. Uh, the landmarks law, as you mentioned earlier, landmarking as a legal right that went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, began at Grand Central. The notion of air rights, which has become a incredibly valuable monetized commodity all over the country, all over the world, began with William Wilgus and Park Avenue and Grand Central. So there are all of these things that you, you just don't think of that we kind of take for granted, and they started right there. Well, it is, uh, again, called Grand Central, how a train station transformed America. It's a marvelous window into a, a, a period of time, and as you said, uh, something that has affected such significant change in our lives. Sam Roberts, it's a pleasure having you here. Folks, if you have any interest at all, go out and get this book because you will love it, and especially loving the photos in there. Sam, it's a pleasure. Thanks for spending some time with us. Jack, thanks so much. You be well.